This is Anurupa Bhattacharji, Department of Social Work, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, and we'll be continuing the discussion on community organization and social action. For today's lecture, we'll be looking into community organization's concept and meaning, the definition of community organization, the scopes as well as the process of community organization. To start with, we'll be looking into the concept and meaning of community organization. This is a method which makes a conscious effort and direct initiative for the needs of the community. We develop integration within the community and help the people cooperate with each other. We look towards a consensus, we look towards people coming together to sort their problems, help us in the intervention and finally work out on the permanent solutions. It is a democratic method which believes on equity, equality as well as dignity of the people. The principle of acceptance, the principle of non-judgmental attitude and every other value and principle of social work is intact in this method because we believe in no casteism or no demarcations of the society, whichever way it may be. It works in the community to develop the living standards of the people. We believe in upliftment, we believe in empowerment, we also believe in collective methods so that we can enhance the resources and activities of the people in terms of their social functioning and social roles. We also look forward to the motivation of people and inculcate the idea of promotion and progress in the community depending upon the resources and the needs of the people within the livelihood. We'll go ahead and check the definitions of community organization. For this, we'll first look into Murray G. Ross's definition, which was given back in 1967. According to Murray G. Ross, the process by which the community identifies the needs and objectives, gives priority to them, develops confidence and will to work at them, finding resources both internal and external, to deal with them as well as in doing so extends the cooperation and collaborative attitude as well as practices in the community. When we try and break this definition to understand a little more about community organization, first of all, we have to look into the concept of identifying needs and objectives. Every community has its own needs and objectives. Murray G. Ross has stressed on the fact that all the interventions that needs to be done within a community has to be based on the needs and objectives of the people living there. The second definition objective that we have here is prioritizing them. When we have a list of needs and objectives identified, we need to prioritize on the fact which needs to be worked upon first and gradually what are the steps to be taken for the community organization. For this, we need to develop confidence among the people we need to work at them with the people in the intervention module as well as look into the resources, both internal and external. Cooperation, motivation and collaboration have been given special emphasis in this definition because these are the elements through which people work in the community for the greater good and development. For understanding the definition, we will also look into Kammer and Speck's definition which was given back in 1975. Here is where we have defined community organization as various methods of intervention whereby a professional change agent helps the community system composed of individuals, groups and communities in engaging all the kinds of activities which are planned. These are the actions which needs to be done for the development of the community with a special emphasis on the problem in the democratic system. So here is where we are looking into a broader picture we are involving all the individuals forming the group as well as the community as a whole. We involve all of them into the intervention modules and we see that the value systems are not harassed or not engaged in anywhere. We look into the social problem from a dimension of finding permanent solutions that will help the people to live a better life. We'll move ahead to the scopes of community organization. The first scope of community organization refers to the upliftment of vulnerable sections. We will look into the community on the basis of needs and whatever objectives of development we have. Based on that, 
whoever requires an upliftment whoever has an issue in gaining all the kinds of opportunities or maybe they are not getting the kind of resources that they're supposed to get we look into the interventions of intervet in upliftment for them we will also look into the factors of enabling change in outlook wherein people will have an acceptance empathy and will include everyone into the resources it also supports economic development of the community wherein we look forward to the opportunities given to the people in terms of economic development whether it's about starting a new venture to connecting them with whatever resources available we also look into the improvement of existing circumstances be it social problem be it any issue that is hindering their livelihood be it something which is making their lives a little more stressed we look into the factors of improving it through the designed and curated interventions that we do based on the studies of the community and we also look into the improvement of existing ventures and resources whether these are functional whether these are absent whenever we observe something that is not working well in the community our focus goes into improving it be it having a involvement with the other community or maybe bringing the resources from other community or developing it there, there itself we look into the improvement measures moving on to the last section of the lecture which talks about the process of community organization so there are all total six steps which we involve when it comes to process of community organization the first step is community assessment when we decide on working with the community the first thing that we have to do is assessing the community understanding the people understanding the livelihood understanding how exactly do they function will be our first priority of concern without knowing this we will not be able to develop an intervention that suits best the second step comes as community outreach when we reach out to the public and understand if they have any sort of concern or if there is anything that would help us in developing a greater and a better intervention for them we will always be looking into the factor that they are the people who are living in the community they have a clarity about it so to understand that this step brings us a greater dimension of understanding the community the third comes as clarifying your goals wherein you know basically how and why and what you have to do within a community without anything that disturbs their harmony and peace you will also have a clarified goal which is transparent enough within the community between the people and there will be no clashes when you perform in step 4 we will be looking into framing the strategies or actions here is where we'll be giving emphasis on our intervention modules how exactly should we frame it how exactly should we develop it and go ahead with it understanding that there has to be an end result there has to be something extremely productive in step 5 we'll be looking into the factor of building local leadership there will be a time when wherein you will have to terminate your services before that we equip the people to go ahead with the processes we equip certain leaders who can take it to a greater extent this also involves sustainability as a factor because these interventions will be of a greater good for a longer run and the last is mobilizing people wherein you ensure that everyone is a part of the intervention everyone can be a part of the intervention no matter what they will have their own contributions towards the intervention model so that's all about the lecture series we will be coming back with the next topic thank you